this is about how, how basically when I left college, what led up to me next Thursday going to China. So first of my siblings to be able to do so. When I left home, mom had, mom and dad, they, they, my 18th birthday, got a smartphone, and mom's rule was that when I was in college, every Sunday I needed to make sure I called home. So, yeah, I did that. Every Sunday in two years I would call home. And when I came home for Thanksgiving and saw everything rearranged, I thought, well, what was the good of that? I don't, like, okay, so clearly I was not informed of anything. But I, I would talk to mom, and she, she always just wanted to know that I was healthy, that I was eating. And so I'm glad that I was able to do that for her, even if for me I'm like, oh, darn it, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, um, ooh, got my cards out of order. Uh, by sophomore year, I had, of course, solidified my plans that I am indeed going to China, and that's something I felt very deeply about. And her first reaction was freaking out, you don't know enough Chinese, you're not going to do well. And I thought, Mom, I'm, I'm going there to learn Chinese. That's part of the, the program I'm doing. And of course, it took her some time before she was like, you'll be okay. But I don't know. It went a few, I'd say, so spring this semester, so spring 2017 is when I guess he really picked up the, the pace of, okay, he's definitely going, I need to make sure he survives. So what he did is he reached out to lots of different friends and relatives. These people, I, had, I did not even know they existed. I did not know I had these kind of relatives and she had these college friends doing these things. But she was reaching out to them. And actually, uh, her, her nephew, my cousin here, is here right now. He had said how she really was very connected in China. and. When I look back and think, well, how are mom and I alike? That's something I didn't even know, just how much she really did have that outreach without her. The fact that she translates was something that I thought, like, wow, that's something that I do now. Anywho, so she had been reaching out to these people, and finally spring break is when I was home and finally got this WeChat app, which for anyone who's familiar with China, this app is huge. This is basically the app that everyone in China uses. And she had been like, okay, here's this person who teaches in this place, and here's this person who works in this place. and Here's their contact info, go talk to them. And of course I was so busy with my coursework that I hadn't really reached out to them yet, but of course I added them to the app and I kept that running list. And even, even spring break, she had taken me clothes shopping. And for me that's weird because I don't, I don't care. I'm like, I, I got clothes, I'm fine. She actually read my favorite psalm, Psalm 23, Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. So very deeply to me, I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't need to worry about that. But she had done so because she said that, well, with the culture, she doesn't, I quote, I don't want you to look like a beggar. And <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what she said. She insisted that. And I thought, okay, well, I'll do what you want, Mom. So I came with her, we went to Ross, and I just, like, this looks cool, and that looks nice, and oh, you don't like that? Okay, fine, I won't wear that. But picked out some different clothes, and we set it aside and said, okay, this is for you when you go to China. So we set that to the back. But I finally got the WeChat app, so I finally had the people connected to me. Uh, so after spring break, we had another month left. I was back in Reno doing my education things, getting ready. And she, now the calls are a lot more focused on the visa. So first there was always the passport. Finally the passport arrived. And now it became, when's your visa coming? When are you coming back home? When is all this happening? It would be every week. And I'd, I'd reassure mom, it's coming. I got the mail in. Or I've talked to this person. It's coming. It's coming. And oh my goodness, it would have been... It was, it was this. It was this Sunday. Our, our last call was of course Sunday calls. Our last call was actually a little more about. So at this point, I said, "Yeah, I kind of think I found a ride, and I already know the visa's coming because I have the tracking." And of course, he's like, "I don't believe it when I until I see it." And I'm like, "But mom, I have the tracking. I know it's coming." Anywho, she talked about gifts because that's a very important thing in Chinese culture: gift giving. And she had. I was just thinking, okay, I've been talking to my brother, and this is another thing, apparently, she really does talk to all these relatives, and I'm like, okay, if you say so. So she was talking to her relatives, and he was saying, oh, candy might be good, and she was like, but I think they chocolate might melt, because of course, Shanghai, where I'll be studying, is very hot, and of course, going there, and then being there a few months before I can even get to these relatives, yeah, don't want to do that. But I was thinking, it may be hard, candy, so we were, we were talking about that, oh, what gifts should we get? And I actually suggested, well, maybe we could get little souvenirs from Las Vegas. Because, of course, Las Vegas tourism capital, easy to get souvenirs. And also for people in China, that's not, like, that's not something you would find, a genuine souvenir from Las Vegas. And she had also, we talked about this as a family, mom had really loved Las Vegas. And she considered that a home to her. So I was thinking, well, this would be nice. This is a, a trinket from the place where she calls home as a Chinese American. So it fit really well. And she, and she actually said, like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I'll do that. So, of course, 
wasn't able to do that, but on Monday, she gave me a text and said, your visa arrived and we'll get it scanned. Well, that didn't happen, but uh, early in the morning then, visa was scanned to me, I got that. And what I really loved is that here I am now, and she has really set me up for what I'll be doing now for my entire summer and when I'm coming back. Because with the gifts, I know what to get now because that's what she wanted. And even with the relatives, the connections of Yi Fong, the, the cousin of mine, and her nephew, he can help me if I need to figure out any last minute, okay, this is where this person lives, this is their address, this is how I'll find them. And she really did all of this as out of the selflessness of her heart. She cared about me, she wanted me to be okay, and I know doting mother, oh, but just, you'll, you'll be okay, you'll be okay, but I'm not sure, so let me help you a little more. And I, I really love that about her, and I, I, mean, I don't think about it that often because of course I'm calling home and don't know what's going on at home, but clearly she has set me up to be so okay, and I, that's something that I think overall in our family, and many of you have met me or you've met my siblings and you might not have met her, but I've been told it so many times that it's a reflection through us of what she's done, so especially to you all who haven't been able to meet her, I hope that gives you an idea of the person she was. And overall, thank you for listening.